And this well-known music is the signature tune for your 100 best tunes. Another edition of which programme will be on the air at 9 o'clock this evening. The presenter is Alan Keith, and his selection this week includes favourites such as Pachel Bell's Canon in D major, the Glasgow Orpheus Choir singing All in the April Evening, and Tullio Seraphine singing Una Forte Valagnima from Donizetti's L'Elysia d'Amore. Two other programmes of light music to note today feature first at four this afternoon the Scottish singer Kenneth McKellar with A Song for Everyone, accompanied by the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra conductor Alexander Gibson, and that's the start of a new series. The second voice to note is that of John Lawrenson, whose collection of favourite music will be heard at 7.30 this evening. And I'll end this reminder, as I began, by telling you that 100 Best Tunes is on the air tonight at 9 o'clock. After the news, Desmond Carrington presents Radio 2's All Time Greats. Now it's 11 o'clock. Radio 2. With the summary, Nick Page. Tension has built up again at Algiers Airport, where the hijackers of the Kuwaiti airliner have issued a deadline which was due to run out now. They've demanded more fuel for the Boeing 747, but the Algerian authorities have made no move to comply. The hijackers, who've already killed two hostages, gave no indication of what they'd do if their demand wasn't met. The Israeli-occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip are said to have been quiet after curfews were imposed overnight in many areas in response to the worst single day of violence since the current unrest began in December. Up to 15 Palestinians are reported to have been killed in clashes with the Israeli army, which followed the killing in Tunisia of a senior PLO man. Iraq claims to have launched another missile strike against Iran. A military spokesman said six missiles had been fired this morning at the Iranian capital, Tehran. Police in the Irish Republic, where a national prison strike has entered its second day, are searching for five prisoners who escaped from Cork jail last night. The Department of Justice said eight prisoners were involved in the escape attempt. Three were recaptured immediately. From Dublin, Kevin Connolly reports. The eight prisoners escaped by climbing over a wall after they'd overpowered police officers on duty inside Cork Jail at the end of a recreation period. Three were arrested immediately near the prison, but police say five are still at large. The Department of Justice had initially said that only one prisoner remained at liberty, and the striking prison officers say it's a measure of the confusion inside Ireland's jails, which are now being run by police officers and troops, that it took so long to establish exactly what happened. The Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Mr Peter Imbert, says the number of suspects who choose to remain silent when questioned by detectives has grown enormously. In 1979, it was about 4%. Now he says it's more than 20%. Speaking at a Law Society seminar in Oxford, Mr Imbert repeated his call for prosecuting counsel to be allowed to comment in court on whether a suspect remains silent. Now sport and the runners in this year's London Marathon have been on the streets for an hour and a half. For the latest news, we join Ian Dark by the finish line on Westminster Bridge. Well, as always, there's a marvellous atmosphere on the streets of London this morning and the world's largest marathon creating quite a story. The men's race led by a virtual unknown and he's on course for a course record. 25-year-old Jose da Silva of Brazil who's been extending his lead through the Isle of Dogs. He started, unbelievably, the 50th fastest man in the race but after 19 miles he's three quarters of a minute clear well can he keep going or will he blow up behind him a pack of 20 and a terrific race building up for the two british olympic places at stake former winners hugh jones and charlie spedding are up there so too live contenders like midlander dave long tony milosorov kevin forster carl harrison and alistair hutton these men now almost certainly forgetting to silver up front and just running for Olympic selection. Well, meanwhile, in the women's race, can Ingrid Christensen break the world record and create her own slice of history? Well, John Evans, can she? Well, she certainly could be on her way to a record. After one and a half hours, it looks as if Christensen isn't repeating the mistakes she made last year when she began on world record pace and then slowed towards the finish. This year, this year she's been pounding out a remarkably even pace and is on target to become the first woman in history to go under two hours, 20 minutes for the marathon and in the process pick up a winner's chance totaling £55,000. Christensen at the moment is in the Isle of Dogs, but there are signs for the first time that she may be struggling. The women following Christensen, well, they include the New Zealander Anne Ross running her first marathon and the Chinese runner Wang Quinhan. Christensen still hoping, though, for a world record time. 
We're finishing some three hours behind those elite runners on Westminster Bridge will be the likes of 82-year-old Richard Dolph from Canterbury, the oldest man in the race, and Jenny Wood Allen at 76, the oldest woman. But up front, just over six miles to go now, and the Brazilian da Silva showing no signs of weakness. He really would be a shock winner. And moving right along now, over to Radio 2's very own Sunday lunchtime marathon man, the long-staying, long-running Desmond Carrington. Good morning, Jean. Thank you very much for that. And welcome one and all to three hours of musical nostalgia and assuming that you like to take your exercise in a slightly different way, shall we dance? <laughs> While there's moonlight and music and love and romance Let's face the music and dance Before the fiddlers have fled Before they ask us to pay the bill And while we still have the chance 